check, check. So where we were, all this, what what are we learning all these weeks? Sorry? Holy Spirit series we are doing, you know. Uh, We know uh, we have learned uh, the person of Holy Spirit, and we know we have seen how uh, uh, the filling of the Holy Spirit is important, indwelling is important, and then uh, we we have seen uh, also uh, the life uh, how Holy Spirit comes uh, and uh, helps us uh, uh, to helps us to live a life uh, which God has called us as per the Word of God. Okay, so today uh, we are going to look into this topic. Quite sensitive, but very important it is. <laughs> okay, uh, so grieving uh, the Holy Spirit. Okay, grieving the Holy Spirit. Uh, it is so important to understand this topic. Uh, we cannot just pass over and close the series without this in that way, because uh, something which is concerning the Holy Spirit, we should also understand that. Okay, something which is concerning the Holy Spirit, and that's what today uh, he is going. We, we will see from the word. What concerns the Holy Spirit? Okay, what concerns uh, with the Holy Spirit as He works in our life, as He works, uh, uh, as He's uh, partnering uh, with us, uh, in working in our life, uh, 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 wo working in our life to make us more like Jesus. What what concerns Him? We'll just try to uh, see that. Okay. Okay. I don't know whose house is this, but uh, okay. <laughs> okay, who would like to stay in this house? <laughs> I don't know where will you sleep? <laughs> on on the clothes? <laughs> or on the floor? Is is is, is this, this house is not recently moved? Okay, it's not that packers have moved, come and their boxes have opened. It's not like that. This is a house. House. <laughs> it's been. It's been there like that. Okay. Let's assume that is someone's house. Not. Not. Not saying that is your house. <laughs> okay. But it's. It's clutter is like that. Okay. You can see the clutter. There is no space to walk. There is no space to uh, move around. There is no space to sleep. There is no space to relax. Uh, everything is like. If you see, you get confused. What, what is? <laughs> and frustrated uh, with that. And that we see like that, okay. So, bring want to bring a parallel uh, with this. Like sometimes when the Holy Spirit looks at our heart, right? It's like this clutter. It's like this clutter in our heart, okay. He doesn't know what to what is happening in our heart. He knows, he knows what is, but he wants to clear up this clutter, okay. He wants to clear up this clutter. He wants to clear up the mess. What is there? Clear up. Of course, with his help only. We cannot do. Uh, we cannot uh, uh, clear up on our own. We need his help. But he wants to clear it up. The agenda is that clear it up, make space for him, make room for him, so that he can work in complete uh, in co in completeness in that way. Okay. So, are you with me to clear this clutter? Yes. Do you desire to clear this clutter? Do you want the Holy Spirit to come in uh, completeness and? Uh, uh, work in your life so that uh, so that uh, you see his work being manifested in your life okay we may pray a number of things your power your majesty your greatness your miracles your everything to be uh, seen in our life visible in our life but this clutter has to be cleared first clear this clutter first okay clear this clutter so let's see what is the clutter all about okay and uh, you know, this these are the set of verses uh, which talks about lot of clutter which are in our life. It's like Ephesians chapter four verse seventeen to uh, chapter five verse uh, twenty one. 
can one of you just uh, help me uh, with re reading this verse, a set of verses, Ephesians 4, 17 to 5, 21. They have given themselves over to sensuality so as to indulge in every kind of impurity with a continual lust for more. You, however, did not come to know Christ that way. Surely you heard of him and were taught in him in accordance with the truth that is in Jesus. You were taught with, no rega with regard to your former way of life to put off your old self which is being corrupted by its deceitful desires to be made new in the attitude of your minds and to put on the new self created to be like God in true righteousness and holiness. Therefore, each of you must put off falsehood and speak truthfully to his neighbor, for we are all members of one body. In your anger, do not sin. Do not let the sun go down while you are still angry and do not give the devil a foothold. He who has been stealing must steal no longer, but must work doing something useful with his own hands that he may have something to share with those in need. Do not let any unwholesome talk come out of your mouths, but only what is helpful for building others up according to their needs, that it may benefit those who listen and do not grieve the Holy Spirit of God with whom you were sealed for the day of redemption. Get rid of all bitterness, rage and anger, brawling and slander, along with every form of malice. Be kind and compassionate to one another, forgiving each other, just as in Christ God forgave you. Thank you. And I think, did we read till 521? Yeah. Oh yeah, 21. Be imitators of God, therefore, as dearly loved children, and live a life of love just as Christ loved us and gave himself up for us as a fragrant offering and sacrifice to God. But among you there must not be even a hint of sexual immorality or any kind of impurity or of greed, because these are improper for God's holy people. Nor should there be obscenity, foolish talk, or coarse joking, which are out of place, but rather thanksgiving. For this you can be sure, no immoral, impure or greedy person, such a man is an idolater, has any inheritance in the kingdom of Christ and of God. Let no one deceive you with empty words, for because of such things, God's wrath comes on those who are disobedient. Therefore do not be partners with them. For you were once darkness, but now you are light in the Lord. Live as children of light, for the fruit of the light consists in all goodness, righteousness, and truth, and find out what pleases the Lord. Have nothing to do with the fruitless deeds of darkness, but rather expose them, for it is shameful even to mention what the disobedient do in secret, but everything exposed by the light becomes visible, for it is light that makes everything visible. This is why it is said, Wake up, O sleeper, rise from the dead and Christ will shine on you. Be very careful then how you live, not as unwise, but as wise, making the most of every opportunity, because the days are evil. Therefore, do not be foolish, but understand what the Lord's will is. Do not get drunk on wine, which leads to debauchery. Instead, be filled with the Spirit. Speak to one another with psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs. Sing and make music in your heart to the Lord. Always give thanks to God the Father for everything in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Submit to one another out of reverence for Christ. Thanks, Mary. Thank you. Yeah, so this is a portion we are going to uh, ponder on and we see that we will try to bring everything uh, together uh, and we will see what is God speaking to us, where is the clutter. And if you identify clutter, please make a note faster <laughs> because that's a clutter may be applicable to you. Okay. Uh, and if you make that, make a note 
and let's uh, ask God for clear up this clutter today. Okay, so uh, we'll start with the 417 uh, year from the start. I'll just say that uh, we already read this. We see that uh, it all uh, it starts with the verses saying that do not walk as uh, now 17 18 says that now I say and testify in the Lord that you must no longer walk as a Gentiles do. Okay, so don't walk like Gentiles. Okay. So it's a in it's in comparison uh, with our life to the Gentiles in that way. So don't walk like them. Don't walk like them. So they are they are in the futility of the minds. They are, they are darkened. Okay, they are darkened in their understanding, alienated from the life of God. They are all away from the life of God. They they don't uh, they don't understand uh, what is the mind of God. And then uh, they live in ignorance. Okay, uh, they live in ignorance uh, and due to the hardness of heart in that way. Okay. So, so, so we see that they walk in ignorance. There is a hardness of heart. There is unbelief. Okay. So we see that ignorance is that uh, nothing, nothing but they don't ha have a knowledge of Christ at all. They don't, they don't, they don't really acknowledge uh, God in their life. They don't really, uh, they don't uh, really acknowledge the uh, work of uh, Christ uh, on the cross. Uh, the, the, the magnitude of forgiveness we have received. They don't, uh, they don't really, uh, they don't really uh, uh, repent. They don't really. Uh, they don't really understand. Uh, they don't really uh, say that we are uh, understand that sinner. They are they are sinners and they need savior in their life. So their, everything is darkened. Their understanding is darkened, and we see that no knowledge of Christ at all. Okay, and that leads to hardness of heart. Okay, hardness of heart is nothing but there is no unwillingness uh, to change. There is no desire. Uh, there is no desire uh, to change at all. Okay, uh, there is no desire uh, uh, to. Uh, turn from sin to Christ. There's no desire to, to turn at all. Okay, uh, that's that's what is uh, says about in Matthew 13 verse 14 and 15 says that indeed in in their case the prophecy of Isaiah is fulfilled. Uh, that says you will indeed hear but never under, understand. You will indeed see but never pursue. For this people's heart has grown dull, and with their ears they can barely hear, and their ears they have closed. Less lest they should see with their ears and hear with their uh, ears and understand with their heart and turn, I would heal them. The prophecy in Isaiah is already told this. this uh, it was told to his own people that these people have grown so dull, dull that, uh, and they, they, uh, their, their hearts are hardened so much so that because of the sin uh, in their life, because of the sin in their life, uh, uh, the hearts are hardened and they are not responding uh, to uh, God at all, they are not acknowledging God in their life, and they they are not they are not turning to God in their life. Okay, we we see that uh, uh, Jesus. Uh, uh, if if I ask you one question, that who, who, for whom the parables were uh, elaborated and made understood, understand, like Jesus to whom uh, the parables of Jesus were uh, shared or explained well, to whom it was shared, disciples. Okay. This, these are the people, the disciples. Others were just came here and went off. But I would say that this, uh, Jesus' disciples uh, heard the parables uh, and went back and asked questions because we know that uh, Jesus spoke to uh, spoke to people in parables that time. Okay, you are, uh, and we see that uh, Jesus elaborated those parables, gave explanation to the parables to the people who were committed to him, the people who were close to him, committed to him. Okay. That's more. Uh, that's a key word. You can make a note uh, that they, they, he didn't elaborate to the people who ha, who who are just pa going by and uh, who are just uh, uh, who are just amazed by his uh, miracles and all that. No, he, he he gave explanation. He gave understanding to the people who are committed to him in that way. Okay, so let's understand that uh, if the sin is uh, growing in our life, we, uh, our hearts will be hardened. And there is no respond will happen to God, and we will uh, indeed we are not that that implies saying that we are not committed to God in that way. We are not committed to God. So that's what summarizes here in that way. We see that these two verses say like that. Okay, and uh, and indeed we see that the, uh, since they were hardened in their hearts, the Jewish people were so hardened they didn't recognize the Messiah has come, uh, the Savior has come, uh, and uh, they they didn't. They they rejected him. They crucified him, and see, uh, that led to many. Th that we see that how how their lives were. Their own people rejected uh, Savior who came in Messiah in in, in their in in their life. They didn't acknowledge them. 
so that could also happen that if we continue to live in the sin uh, continue to uh, continue to live in sin the, that's the uh, the next outcome will be the hardness of heart and then we see that we we reject christ and we we go astray in that way and god doesn't want us to do that go there okay that's why here uh, in ephesians paul brings out the parallel between our life and gentile lives be careful be watchful okay don't la allow the sin to linger in your life because if sin lingers there will be hardness of heart then the next step will be if you continue to be there uh, ignorant of it you continue to be ignorant of it uh, then that the unbelief will grow and multiply and then you will reject christ and then you are gone astray okay so be watchful and we see that that outcome of the the hardness of heart okay in verse 19 it says that uh, they become callous okay so callous is something that is no sensitivity at all if you uh, uh, there is some uh, uh, there is no sensitivity that, that we cannot feel anything we cannot feel anything we cannot uh, it's like uh, it's it's like just the words are coming and it's just going uh, it, it doesn't make any sense to you that it has uh, the, uh, the word of god doesn't work anything in your life okay it has no meaning in your life it, it you, the god words god's work is spoken but it's like uh, it will not have any effect in your life in that way it's like the callousness uh, can uh, enter in into your life okay and then they give in, they give themselves into uh, sensuality of course uh, enemy got an opportunity because you are all ready for him <laughs> okay all uh, all uh, what i would say um readily uh, offered for him in that way ready uh, readily available for him then he, he will he will take you on a ride a uh, lot of sins multi multiplication of sins happen here the sensuality is nothing but uh, then people will uh, live for their own enjoyment okay own selfish desire okay the people will become more and more selfish people and people will live for their own uh, own uh, 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 to fulfill their uh, uh, Will fulfill their pleasures, desires, all fleshly uh, desires. They will uh, continue to live. Okay, and I would say that that's the uh, sensuality uh, they live into. And then uh, for them, it will not matter. Uh, they will continue to be greedy, continue to be become impure, and then that doesn't matter to them because I I identify myself with world. World is doing, I will also do that. And then it's it's like that. Okay, so we see that the the effects of all these things. Do we understand the effects of all this? If you allow just a small sin, just a small sin, S I N, small sin, <laughs> three words, you allowed. The effects are like this. Okay, you allowed. It, it, the effects are like this. The key words here used in th throughout the verses, I would say that put on the new self, put off the old self, okay, put off the old self, take away this dirty, filthy rag, take away this uh, dirty clothes on your body, take it away, take it away. That's what I would say, the mess, is whatever is that, put it off, put it off and put on the new. It means clear up the clutter, what is there here, okay. So, yeah, that's what it says. Okay, if you read Ephesians, sorry, Colossians chapter 5, there is a parallel there. I will read for you. You can turn your Bibles. Colossians chapter 3 verse 5 to 11. Yeah, it says about how to put off. It says that put to death, therefore what is earthly in you? Sexual immorality, impurity, passion, evil desires and covetousness which is idolatry. On account of this, the wrath of God is coming. In this you too were once walked when you were living in them. But now you must put them away. Anger, wrath, malice, malice, slander and obscene talk from your mouth. Do not lie to one another, seeing that you have put off the old self with its practices and have put on the new self, which is being renewed in the knowledge after the image of his creator. Here there is not Greek, not Jew, circumcised and uncircumcised. Barbarian, Scythian, slave, free, but Christ all and in all. So it, it says a few things about what, what could be the clutter in our life. Okay, what could be the clutter in our life? Let's try to understand from these verses. Okay, it says that put to death what is earthly. So it says that 
don't allow that to live in our life don't, don't allow that sin to exist uh, in our life it is our uh, we should go to god and ask if you identify any sin we should go to god and at an immediate effect at an immediate effect put to death okay put to death what is uh, earthly put to put to death what is earthly that earthly that is what is said about and then it says about uh, that sexual immorality okay we see that that's uh, sexual immorality we, we uh, you see that it covers all sins all sexual sins okay which which could be pornography which could be uh, which could be uh, like um, uh, which could be uh, adultery okay which could be adultery which could be sex outside marriage which could be uh, saying the homosexuality all these things uh, sums up to the sexual immorality we see that uh, uh, anything uh, sometimes uh, uh, we may we may we may not be indulging in actions in all these things but our thoughts how it is how our thought life is is also important so is our thought life pure okay is our, are we thinking rightly are we are we comparing uh, our spouse to someone's spouse okay are, are we are we uh, are, so so are we uh, it's, it's it's we should be careful about it okay we should be careful about it so sexual immorality uh, that's the first uh, sin is mentioned in this list okay the next one is about the impurity okay it's like fill the thoughts I, I already said that and it's like wrong intentions to put down someone uh, I, we, we know that at workplace there is a lot of competition going on a lot of competition so what we, we do that uh, in order to promote ourselves uh, uh, in order to do something well uh, if you have done well we will project it as a big thing it's now it's like in the at workplace if you don't project you will not get what you what you are expected to get okay uh, it's we have to project everything we we have to add, uh, we have to project uh, and some some people try to project everything and some people while projecting put down other people in that way saying that uh, he he uh, i went there okay he was not doing anything and i managed to i managed to help him and then i i, I helped him so much that he was able to complete his task and i was uh, i was the one who was coaching him like that you we will paint a picture like that so so and so saying that we are putting someone down in that way we are putting someone down so it happens in all areas i gave a work scenario here but i would say that that's what uh, we we want to achieve something the success is the driving factor there and that's why the the wrong intentions to put someone down and sometimes we may may put down through uh, people through our words also okay we may put down uh, the way we speak uh, way we, the way we don't give respect to the people uh, okay we need to understand that uh, uh, every person here every person everywhere also here also i would say that has been made he is a he is a image of god he is a image of god okay and every he is he is uh, we should give them the due respect and honor okay and i would say that we should not uh, put anyone down put anyone down and that uh, the, the so we it's like i am great i have i know something uh, we should be always be humble enough to understand that uh, we cannot put people down okay and then passion it's it's also uh, is close related to uh, something which is driving you okay in a wrong uh, way which is not uh, which is not aligned with god we also have to see that okay and then evil desire we, uh, wicked uh, uh, all the wicked thing uh, we want to uh, we want to do something wrong to others and we, we have to we, uh, that's a depraved mind the mind is not uh, the mind is not in a right place uh, the my, my uh, the there is no transformation of uh, we have not our mind is not transferred even though we have taken we have known god took took baptism and uh, followed the years have followed but the, still the mind is the same like it has not changed it has been completely wicked and depraved in that way okay covetousness can one of you read exodus 20 17 exodus chapter 20 verse 17 yeah so we see that uh, we sh uh, god says that we should not covet anything uh, which belongs to our neighbor sometimes what we do is that we compare our life with someone else's life we see how that person is growing how that person has uh, up in abundance and uh, how god has blessed them and then we we see that when we start comparing our life with the other other person's life 
then uh, then that's where the dissatisfaction comes the discontentment settles in our heart and then we are always uh, uh, what we are doing you know well <laughs> grumbling <laughs> okay that okay uh, we, we we are always grumbling okay that uh, the noise uh, the noise of grumbling is so much that in, in a dabba when you put I, i thought i will bring a dabba i forgot but you you can understand okay uh, that in a dabba if you put a 1 rupee coin right and close that coin gat 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 so that all the noise uh, around uh, because of discontentment is like this that said like that i have not got anything i have not have anything i have uh, i have so less uh, he has so much more uh, and he is doing uh, well and i am not doing well i'm i'm working so hard i have don't have anything got the noise it's like noise this noise of discontentment flowing around in that way and i would say that uh, that's a covetousness that's a covetousness the discontentment you carry in your heart but what does bible say when you are discontent sorry yes so <laughs> the bible says that contentment with godliness is a great gain okay so the opposite that do, do not uh, it says that be content be content with god has provided god knows what he he has provided we, uh, thought, we should understand that whatever is been provision to has provision to it is been blessed by god let's live in that state first it's not your talent it's not your uh, it's not your what uh, what uh, ability it has got you there okay it's a provision of god in your life he can lift it up any time if it lift it up we know our state will be whatever you have is is from him and i would say that let's stay in that state and let's let's uh, be thankful to god let's be thankful to god because he has provided and let's be uh, let's be always praising god for what he has done let's not compare our life with anyone else if we start comparing there is no end to that okay is that okay so covetousness is so much so around we have to be careful about it and impurity and also sexual immorality we see that lot of videos lot of ads uh which promote this and we need to be watchful and careful about it we need to not go and do this okay yeah in extension to that put them away okay now uh, earlier it was like put to death okay this uh, this should not exist in our life this should never be existing in our life if if it is existing today is a day put to death put to death you are allowed to put to this that to all these things okay then then put them away okay put them away what to put away anger how many times we get angry in a day yes all some but there is no one can assure saying that uh, no i i don't get angry any time <laughs> no 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 <laughs> you know understand the morning 7 to 8 is a rush preparing children for the school <laughs> your emotions flow out the right the person who are will flow out in that time preparing get, make uh, bringing uh, like joan and to get, wake him up and then uh, send him in the washroom and then preparing make him breakfast and then rushing that bus should, we should be before bus time <laughs> the bus guy will go up <laughs> anyway. so it's all anger the emotions uh, uh, flow out that's the one thing i said but it's it uh, anger is in in my, in our in our day span right if we see there are multiple uh, stages where we see we have expression of anger and uh, anger is not bad uh, i would say there is God, jesus was angry when he see that uh, uh, the house of the god was used as a marketplace and he expressed the anger because that was a righteous anger but i would say that that unrighteous anger we express we don't so uh, show patience we don't show uh, we don't show we don't operate in love when we don't operate in love that's what the unrighteous anger uh, ex- is expressed and we should be always be careful about it okay and then uh, what happens is the the ang- anger if it is uh, multiplies it grows into wrath okay 
and this is a state uh, uh, i know this is extreme this is extreme sometimes we may uh, we may try to hit our spouse we may try to uh, yell at our spouse we may try to we may try to uh, uh, if 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 uh, if spouse uh, if not spouse uh, at least to the uh, at least to walls <laughs> but you will do something so that that anger controls okay at that moment in that rage you will try to do something okay and that that's the extreme anger that's the extreme anger. and then put them away god said put them away okay and then malice to desire to harm someone okay desire to harm someone and that's the malice goes that i want to uh, i want to do something harm to him because he has done something to me in the past if you if you are i know um if you are st stuck in any court cases and all okay uh, and uh, if you or your some that what would could be lot of things we hear yeah, that the anger just comes up when we think about those person and then uh, uh, the property issues we see that there are a lot of people uh, uh, fight over the property issues and uh, since he has done uh, he has done uh, uh injustice to me i will also do injustice to him and all that thoughts go on in that way so money is the root cause of all evil that's where uh, it this all things can also start on okay and then uh yeah slander and it's also like make a false and damaging statements about sometimes we just speak just a, a, a statement just because tongue has no uh, control right uh, self control just a speak a statement about someone uh, and it damages the person's uh, uh, complete identity before others okay we should be careful how we speak about others uh, we should not do the backbiting or not we should uh, uh, we should not uh, speak wrong about other person we should uh, we should be careful we should not uh, gossip about something okay we should not gossip about it is easy to gossip about someone right someone uh, about manager about some some person some ex person uh, whom we know okay uh, it it is it it looks to be funny but it's not right make false and damaging statements okay we should be careful about that and then uh, obscene talk from your mouth the vulgar the dull, dirty talk okay the dirty talk i know uh, sometimes uh, before we could know lord uh, we we have carried and sometimes it is getting carry forwarded till date also the obscene talk uh, uh, the Uh, uh the the bad words which we use which may we may use the filthy talk which we may use so we should be uh, careful about that also okay and do not lie uh, to one another i would say that um, i uh, this is always uh, uh, me and lakshmi are conscious and we try to uh, tell johanan also that that don't lie because children pick up lies easily okay children uh, pick up saying lies very easily okay uh, but i would say that uh, who is the father of lies satan and this is what we learned uh, i think zack punan also says that we, uh, satan is the father of lies then if we try uh, if we uh, learn to uh, if we learn, if we continue to lie lie right we we become we don't become children of god but we become children of satan in it okay and we say that uh, uh, that's what uh, uh, we we should be careful how that uh, we should not lie okay if it even if it is cost something even if it is has to uh, damage uh, even if it is has to uh, for that moment of time uh, if we feel that there will be uh, the uh, the conversations would not be smooth in that in way let let's not lie let's not lie if you have be fair be just at your workplace also we want to say that uh, let it at you, you if you are not done not done that's give some time let me do allow me to do similarly in other cases also just not cover up let let's not cover up the mistakes let's not cover up any others any others mistake but don't lie don't lie lying is bad lying is bad if you are lying you, i would say that that's a great clutter there uh, and god doesn't li uh, like that it because all if you see that uh, the list of the sins i mentioned here it starts with sexual morality immorality but it uh, here uh, it it's quite a ending here with lie but i would say that as we sum this up uh, we cannot say that uh, sexual morality in god's eyes is given a great weightage and liar lying is given a less weightage no every sin is assigned to him <laughs> it's the same magnitude he sins lying is equal to sexual immorality 
the wrath is equal to sexual morality anger is equal to sexual morality okay and then covetousness is equal, is equal to sexual morality or everything is equal so when you see the sin is sin s i n sin that's it in his eyes so do not lie do not lie and then this is what it says that put off the old self with his practices so now it it summarizes saying that this if the anything of this is existing put it off put it off put off this old self and this is what uh i would say that the urge of uh, the uh, this is what holy spirit is demanding asking us today and that's a clutter what we saw could be one of this in this list and i would say that we is urging you to take it off today put to death everything if it is not put to death it's a clutter i cannot enter into your life i cannot work into your life you will say that fill me with your holy spirit fill me with your holy spirit where there is no place is filled with clutter where it will fill your heart should have some space right filling me is nothing that is nothing going to overflow <laughs> is it in your heart there should be a place <laughs> i'll just give a minute to pause and ponder here for you to reflect what is going on in your life you have identified your clutter make a note okay we we'll see that we read about we read in colossians put off and put on and then same parallel comes here in ephesians 5 verse 25 to 32 uh, I would, and more or more similar uh, set of sins has been mentioned the falsehood i would say that this is uh, falsehood be careful don't live as a hypocrite we uh, uh, be in the church uh, very nice to everyone uh, smiling to everyone and doing things but when we go back home we are not living as god's uh, as per god's word okay they are the hypocrites okay when they go back home they identify themselves as a worldly people a worldly people in a sense uh, identify uh, what gentiles do all that whatever we say uh, but when we come to church we are very nice and all that okay before in the church group or something don't live like that don't live like an hypocrites okay i told you already speak the truth with your neighbor be angry and do not sin do not uh, steal of course uh, do be on, do honest work okay uh, don't uh, don't uh, yeah don't get into something which you, uh, which where you feel that you will gain something more you will have something more and uh, you that that's not the right thing and also at workplace whatever time is there work of course some of course we, stu- we struggle with the extra working extra hour which we have to fix it but i would say that at least what that whatever time you have be do honest work in that way okay and then no corrupting talk avoid avoid crude crude joking foolish talk which is often see or heard so whenever we joke uh, whenever we joke about someone some to us about something let's be mindful don't uh, we should be careful that it, it doesn't put down the person or it it will hurt the person okay let's be mindful a healthy joke a good joke is nice uh, to have uh, just for to make the uh, uh then i moment uh, just lighten the environment in that way but i would say that avoid crude joking foolish talk in that way and do not lie to one another i already mentioned so in this falsehood and the uh, crude joking and do not steal was the uh, new thing here okay so we we see that but we see that all this when we sum up is a sin and this, all this when we say sum up if if this is still existing what is happening is this uh, this is happening outcome is this the ephesians 4:30 Ephesians 4:30 says that and do not grieve the holy spirit of god do not grieve the holy spirit of god by whom you were sealed for the day of the redemption so he is the one uh, he is the one working with you he is one who is partnering with you and if he sees this is clutter in your life he is getting grieved in fact 
is getting grieved uh, can can one of you just try uh, make it uh, give a try saying that what is grieving means what could be the synonym of uh, grieving grief hmm? mourn okay quenching okay not allowing to do something mourning is crying and then whatever and then we can also say that uh, is so sorrowful okay it's like what happens is like we are mourning and we have been sorrowful uh, that that state comes when someone close person dies in that in a close relationship when someone dies right that's a mourning that's a sorrowful state uh, is there in our life and i would say that uh, holy spirit grieves like that cries like that and uh, the moans like that uh, when the, because we knows that the person uh, whom god has chosen okay is is no, has not put to death all these things put them away put to death all these things is still alive in their life is still alive in their death and then what happens is that he, and he, the outcome of this is we know when the person allows this sins existing and lingering around there is a spirit death death in the sense spiritual death uh, in, in in the sense like separation uh, not in fellowship with god and not in uh, not uh, allowing god to work and there is no counsel anything is working in your life there is callousness and all that what we uh, read in the first but i would say that uh, grieves because he is going away from god holy spirit grieves because he is going that person x person is going away from god and that's a mourning you say great cry you if you close your eyes and if you see uh, if you if you if you have identified that si and sin one sin in your life and if you close your eyes and see lord are you really mourning at this now are you are you really crying out in loud voice lord lord grieving uh, at this loud voice i i can see i can hear that loud voice in that sin which is there which is existing which is alive which is not put to death i would say that that's a grie grieving happening in that if you close your eyes you will hear that mm -hmm. grieving a loud voice a loud cry and how can you console <laughs> and how can you allow uh, not allow gr uh, holy spirit to grieve is just that put on the new self there Church, do you want to? You understand the urgency of it. You understand the urgency of it. If today you are hearing and not doing anything. The grieving will continue, and outcome has already been shared. I see that. Yeah, sorry. It's a. deep distress disp disappointment expressed when someone dies i already show, shared that and then how to what is that we have to do the new self okay put on put on compassionate heart okay compassionate heart i know so, uh, when we live for our own right selfish desire selfishness and uh, uh, my life uh, my money my uh, my house my bungalow whatever for everything uh, earning for me 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 and myself right we become very insensitive to people i would say that we become very insensitive to people and we are not empathetic in that way we don't understand people's uh, what the people suffering is we don't understand we don't put ourselves in uh, in their shoes empathetic means we do, we ideally we we put ourselves in their situation and we try to understand what they are trying to go through but if you are selfish you will never be able to understand you never be able to understand never be able to grasp but god wants that should be a shift and turn around saying that have a compassionate hearts have a compassionate hearts and then it also says that be kindness be considerate about others uh, about needs of others it's not that uh, what i what i get or am i am my needs are satisfied at home also we be careful let let uh, let others needs be satisfied first let let they be taken care in the in the also in in and around if there is a needs uh, uh, if there are any needs around god shows us something okay only when you try to learn to give your life to god more and more god will uh, open up the avenues and shows show you already where to give what to give give means instead not money 
it's not money it's maybe your the word of encouragement may, maybe the word maybe the words of will something bring a blessing and healing into their life maybe a word which will help them to build others okay uh, or, or or sometime a, a time of a, a short time of praying with them okay is is that god will show that avenues in that way that kindness will overflow is a is a fruit of the uh, holy spirit in that way it will work in your life okay and then uh, humility okay and uh, this is this is what last week god was also saying be humble be humble uh, in in the uh, god uh, the word was coming to my mind is that be humble under the mighty hand of god so always be under the mighty hand of god don't go don't go overboard don't go outside him outside him uh, outside is uh, uh, reach and be humble like that always be uh, like that that's what that was a uh, that was a vision i was seeing that be, uh, be under his arms always be under hum, humble yourself okay uh, humble yourself allow god to work okay uh, allow god to work and then oh, it's it's like uh, this could be a situation one example what i put is like, like whenever there is um, there is some issue there is some uh, rough argument happen let you be the first person to go and reconcile okay let you be the first person uh, to go and re reconcile uh, who came out, who came first to you jesus came or you you went to jesus first lord jesus uh, that's that's the way <laughs> so it's like reconciliation happens like that okay i, I value reconciliation i want that this relationship to, to maintain i want peace in this uh, uh, peace and harmony in this relationship i want the unity in, in among us to be sustained and that's why i i value relationship and i value this relationship more than anything i want to go and reconcile that's a humility don't wait for others to come and talk to you meekness the same thing there patience i know um, accept each other's mistake uh, you know i i struggle with this sometimes we, we see that there's a always we say that there's a pendulum there we see that on the left side is a grace and the left right side is a truth what should be operated grace or truth grace or truth <laughs> what did jesus come bring as a package with him read read book read book of john chapter 1 he, he brought both so the pendulum is in the center not the left lot leaning to the left or right okay it's in the center so what happens is when we when we uh, actually talking to people right when we actually uh, uh, talking to people we should be careful sometimes we are more saying the truth 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 you you are did not do this you are like this you 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 are bad you did so and so mistakes you 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 are not following like this you are not uh, you are speaking like that you are bad bad all these things you can we can end up into the truth truth mode always or we can end up in the grace mode only it's okay let it's okay he will learn it's okay let let him do it's okay so that's a that's the way we, we speak but jesus doesn't say that jesus what he does lord jesus what is does his op way he operates in the lives of people is not so grace and truth at the center what he does is he shows grace okay so lady who was the woman who was caught in adultery how how did, did uh, lord manage him managed her situation how did lord, can one of you all of you know the story can one of you just uh, say that how how did uh, Uh, how did uh, lord manage that situation yeah. okay so you since of a given go and see no more okay and then the people who who were uh, saying that uh, truth there were pointing on to the truth she should be killed she should be stoned to death okay but uh, but was did jesus, what did jesus says uh, if anyone has if anyone among you has not sinned he has a right to pick up the stone and uh, hit uh, on her but it's 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 everyone has sinned so we should understand that uh, when we when we are do, when we are operating in the truth right we should always understand that we also we have also faulted we have also made mistake we are not so perfect that should be there in our mind also in dealing with children in dealing with adults also okay we have also faulted so we have also messed up our life we have also messed up our life 
So I would say that the lady who has messed up her life, how is Jesus de dealing is that it's not truth. Uh, it's first applied, he applied grace, allowed her to leave, not allowed people to stone at her. That's a grace application there. And then she's, he, so he told, he applied truth before she could leave, saying that do not sin no anymore. And that's the way we need to operate that when we are people leading, uh, dealing with people also accept their mistake but uh, let them uh, uh, accept them don't say through truth but let them also know that uh, in a gentle way let them also know that that we uh, this is the way it says this is the bible it says this is the way we need to live and operate uh, that's the gentle way we have to go through got it how to apply grace and truth yes will you apply it so that's why Bible says, be imitators of God, be imitators of Jesus. And that's what it says that apply grace and truth, apply, uh, accept each other mistakes. We are not perfect. And bearing with one another, this is very extreme difficult task, what you are asking me. Okay, bearing with one another. Uh, so it's, uh, if I look at the person, I, uh, I, I get... Uh, I get my nerves get <laughs> tightened and I don't know what to say. <laughs> okay, I, I don't know how to use my words. Uh, okay, but I would say that uh, uh, bear, uh, uh, we have we are, uh, we are we have been asked to bear with one another. We have been asked to bear with one another. I know a person is uh, cont continuously like uh, uh, taunting or continuously uh, uh, doing something uh, which is causing uh, you discouragement and all that. But stay on, stay on there. Stay on there, God. God is asking you to stay on there because you are going mature. You are being persevering. You are being going mature. God is uh, leading you, you to the next step in in your in your spiritual life. Stay on, stay on, stay on, because uh, that's where bearing with one another comes. Okay. So understand that each person is different. Understand that each personality is different, and we should bear. We should be kind and bearing with one another in that case. And then forgiving uh, one another. Uh, let you be the first to seek forgiveness. Of course, let you, the, you be the first, as I reconciliation I mentioned, how important it is. Similarly, let you be the first, first to ask forgiveness also. Okay. And I would say that, uh, Bible, Bible gives a parallel saying that, before the sun goes down, before the day, day ends, you, uh, you should close your, uh, you should have the reconciliation done, prayer done, and then peace, uh, peace again restored, and all that has to be done before, uh, as soon as it possible. Let it, uh, so let it not, go to the next day in that way so if, if there is something small thing uh, small issue happen let's close it fast fast let's go close. Be before you could do anything else stay uh, stay there close it fast pray over it talk talk over it pray over it and then close it faster that's uh, is required and then uh, can one of you read uh, john uh, yeah ephesians 5 verse 1 and 2 and one of you read 15 and I'll read John 15 and th 15 13. Can one of you read Ephesians 5 verse 1 and 2? Yeah, yeah. Be imitators of God, therefore, as dearly loved children, and live a life of love, just as Christ loved us and gave himself up. For us as a pregnant offering and sacrifice of God. But among you, there must not be even a hint of sexual immorality or of any kind of impurity or of greed, because these are improper for God's holy people. For should not, nor should there be um, obscenity, obscenity, foolish talk, or coarse Enough. joking, which are out of place. Yeah, I think it's okay. Fine. Ephesians 5, 1, 1, 1 and 2 only. Thanks, Auntie. Okay. So we see that uh, also John uh, 15, 13 says that greater love has no one than this, that someone lay down his life for his friends. You are my friends if you do what I command you. So it says that uh, uh, be imitators of God as beloved children also. And it says that he has given his life. Okay. And how, how his life, uh, if the Christ loved us so much that he gave himself for us, 
and that what that what was what it became to god is nothing but a fragrant offering okay fragrant offering and sacrifice to god what could be the parallel here he he, he gave his life okay uh, he he chose to give his life he he sacrificed his life uh, he he and that indeed became a fragrant offering and a sacrifice to god so if you see that through your life the aroma of christ would uh, spread aroma cannot generate anywhere <laughs> it has the fragrance the fragrant offering has to be uh, given then only the aroma will felt around okay and i would say that when only when you put to death okay put to death the same the, the christ the reason why uh, christ was christ has put uh, uh, gave his life for himself for us is nothing but for the for our sins and similarly if if we if we carry our cross uh, every day and uh, put to death all this thing it become uh, it it becomes a fra- our life becomes a fragrant offering and a sacrifice unto god do you want to be like this is this your goal that the fragrant offering uh, you become a fragrant offering and sacrifice to god and the aroma is uh, aroma of christ uh, is been spread around all everywhere through your life the aroma of christ is been spread around men men this is so this is expected this is expected and as you clear the clutter clutter right this you can see uh, holy spirit manifesting in your life the power we, we ask for great power wonders the miracles and all that okay but the real miracle is needed in our life in our hearts first <laughs> the true miracle is, of course that miracles i don't deny i uh, i don't deny i don't deny the work of christ the power of christ in, in that area but i would say that the true miracle is needed to change our heart the true miracle is uh, needed for us to put off the old self first that that is a big miracle uh, can happen in your life and when that happens the outcome can be seen that holy spirit comes and this he will he will help you to put on all these things and it says that further on put on let the peace of christ rule in our hearts and definitely uh, when we put on everything uh, we are uh, we are abiding in christ uh, we are allow uh, we lo- are loving god to prune us we are allowing god to uh, shape us mold us and there is definitely a fellowship with god there is a peace with god in that way and we see that that's a ru- that's ruling in our hearts that, that peace is never lost and then we are always thankful because we know we are acknowledging god's work in our life we are un- we are humble enough uh, to say that without him i cannot i am nothing in that way we know that uh, uh, that um, if we don't abide in him we are doing we are nothing in that way we know that uh, that unless holy spirit comes in our life uh, works in our life we are we we, we are not fruitful uh, and unless holy spirit works in our life uh, we 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 are not to be called any we we are heading nowhere in that way so we we know that uh, we we have been thankful because of what god is working in our life we are, we, we have been uh, the, the the gratitude uh, and the outflow of the praise flows out uh, when we are thankful to god okay when we are thankful to god we have gra- we, the the outflow the praise just for, flows out because we know how he's wor- worked how he has cleared up my mess how he has cleared up my mess how he has indeed worked in my life how he has helped me to come out of this and we we are really thankful for it in that way men so why such high expectations you see that ephesians 4 1 and 2 say that we are we are expected to be imitators of god okay the reason what i say that uh, is that we are expected to be imitators of god so that's the reason uh, means we are expected to follow god we are expected to uh, to copy god that's what i was saying joanan was asking what does imitator mean just copy him don't do much thing just copy this teacher you will be fine <laughs> just copy god okay copy god and then we are called to be saints the, the expectation is high because uh, this expectation is high because we are called to be holy people we are we are called to be the set apart people we are called to be the consecrated people we means uh, god has taken out from uh, from this uh, mess and uh, uh, he he has kept us away from that he has brought us into his kingdom he has made, he has separated us from that 
he has consecrated us he has made us holy that's the reason his expectations are so high and then walk as children are like or children of light 1 john chapter 5 can one of you read 1 john chapter 1 uh, verse 5 to 7 when john chapter chapter 1 verse 5 to 7 But if we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship with one another and the blood of Jesus, his son, purifies us from all sin. Yeah. So God expects us to walk in light. If you, if you say that we are lock, walking in light and still living in the darkness, means still continue to live in our sin, we are, we are not having a fellowship with him. We don't have fellowship with him. We are lying, in fact. We are, we are, uh, we are pretending that we are walking in uh, we are walking in. Uh, uh, walking in truth but in, in fact we are not walking in that way okay and then we are we are expected to walk as the holy spirit leads and we have uh, only when we put off our old self we we can ident we can uh, confidently say that we have this inheritance uh, inheritance in the sense we are we belong to the kingdom people and we belong to him in that way okay and yeah the next one so i would say that can can one of you read uh, and we'll just read uh, go to psalms 51 and just i'll uh, we'll read few verses there and then spend some, uh, just spend in time in prayer for a few minutes psalms 51 See here, here is a man david we know his life we know when he sinned how was his response? You know, uh, one of the uh, one of the sin which I, which I called off is like sexual immorality. But you see how he responded when he when uh, the prophet Nathan okay uh, came and spoke to him uh, and uh, has uh, had told him that he has sinned, he has uh, done this uh, uh, sexual immorality, he was in the adultery and sexual immorality. We see that uh, uh, he, he confronted when he was confronted. Uh, how he was his response uh, we see that uh, uh, in this verses right okay uh, have mercy on me O god according to your steadfast love according to your abundant mercy blot out my transgression wash me through thoroughly from my iniquity and cleanse me from my sin so he went back to god and said that cleanse me from my sin this sin, sin is he too heavy to carry in that way for i know my transgression and my sin is ever before me against you you only you only have sinned and done what is evil in your sight so it says that when 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 a person sins is is not is as a direct impact of saying that we are sinning against god not if we, even though we are we, we are sinning against each other but it's also the sinning against god in that way okay and then it says uh, that here you know if you fast track the few verses is that says that uh, create in me a clean heart o god and renew a right spirit within me Cast me not uh, away from your presence and take not your Holy Spirit from me. Okay. Restore to me uh, the joy of your salvation and uphold me with a willing spirit. So it says that, uh, God, I need, I desire fellowship with you. God, I, uh, I desire peace with you. I uh, create, uh, take away this mess from my heart. Create in me a clean heart, O oh God, and renew a right spirit in me. Okay. And take, uh, do not take away your Holy Spirit uh, from me. And restore the joy of the salvation. If you have lost the joy of salvation, maybe it could be this. If you lost the joy in your life, maybe this could be the reason. Okay. And so this is, so ponder upon the verses uh, 10 to uh, 10 and 11. And I would say that this is what should be, uh, this should be our prayer. This should be our prayer. Okay. Yeah, I ask, uh, can I ask Bahia to lead us in prayer uh, and see that, if if you close your eyes, if if you hear the loud moaning and uh, sorrowfulness of Holy Spirit today, you need you need to read you need to go back uh, to God uh, as Dave, uh, David went to God and uh, he he prayed these ten and eleven verses and God indeed cleansed him, restored him back in that way. I ask Paya to lead us in.
Can we bow our heads in prayer? Father God, we want to thank you for speaking to us today. Lord, many of us have come, would have come with a heavy heart, with a with a mind and a heart that is seeking for answers for all that's going on, for, for a way our, we are living our lives far away from the truth, far away from righteousness, living in darkness, Lord. And we, we thank you that your word speaks to each one of us. You bring us out of the darkness into your marvelous light, Lord. It is only you who can do it. And we want to thank you that you speak your word in our lives and your word brings life into our lives, Lord. And we want to pray that, Lord, if for all of us who are currently doing things that are causing grief uh, to the Holy Spirit, Lord, we ask, Lord, that you would forgive us. Forgive us our sins, Lord, and cleanse us of all unrighteousness, Lord. Lord, pour out your blood upon us, Lord, and cleanse us and make us righteous in your eyes, Lord. And Lord, pour out your spirit in its fullness, Lord. Remove everything that is that is of, of dirt within us, which is occupying space, which, which should not, Lord, in our hearts, our minds, our souls, our bodies. Lord, everything that, that is, is not right in us, Lord, take it away, Lord. And Lord, as David prayed, Lord, create in us a clean heart, Lord, and pour out your Holy Spirit upon him, on me. Lord, we want to pray that, Lord, today, Lord, help us to come before you and confess our sins, Lord. Even as we go to our homes, Lord, in our in our one-on-ones with you, Lord, in our uh, in our time, personal prayer times with you, Lord, we pray that we would be able to confess our sins and pour out everything that is within us, and ask that you would see what disorder is there, what mess is there, Lord, and help us to clean it out, Lord. Give an account for everything before you, Lord, and then ask for forgiveness, and yet you would forgive, Lord, because Lord, as your word says, Lord, as far as the East is from the West. So far, you have taken away our transgressions from us. Lord, and you, it is only your blood that can make us white as snow. And Lord, we come before you, Lord, as, as people who are in need, people who are dependent on you, Lord, people who know that if anybody can do it for us, it is you, Lord. And we pray that and ask for forgiveness for grieving your Holy Spirit. And we pray that from this moment onwards, Lord, we would start making things right before you, Lord. And that you would be pleased with us and that we would be able to continue to live our life of holiness and righteousness and truth as, as we receive your grace more and more in jesus precious name we pray amen